Despite the many obstacles in television's path throughout 2023, the small screen has still managed to deliver a delightful year of great TV shows both new and returning. From subversive superhero hits to daring franchise spin-offs, affectionate sitcoms and instant classic dramas wrapping things up in truly spectacular fashion, 2023 has given audiences a lot to sink their teeth into, and plenty more to look forward to in 2024. And make sure you let us know down in the comments which show has been your favourite of this year. With that in mind, I'm Adam, this is What Culture, and here are 20 best TV shows of 2023. Before we jump in, I do want to make some honourable mentions because there have been simply too many great shows released or returning this year. It seems fair we spend some time on those that didn't quite crack the top 20. On the Star Trek front, Star Star Trek Strange New Worlds and Star Trek Picard have ventured into their latest seasons with more heart and bracing adventure than ever before, proving a rollicking good, nostalgic time for new and old fans alike. Elsewhere, Invincible has been an incredible ride in the four episodes that have been released so far for its second season and the Atom Eve special. After the devastating ending of Season 1, we see Mark, Debbie and Co sitting in their grief in wake of the destruction left by Omni-Man before he went flying off into space. The show continues to grow bigger in scale, but never loses scope of what makes the show fantastic as we continue to follow our favourite characters and their humanity in an often alienating world. Bring on the rest of the season. On a lighter note, the underseen comedy drama Extraordinary serves as another reminder that the superhero genre is far from dead. Whilst Donald Glover's return to TV, Swarm perfectly balances macabre laughs with arrowing social commentary. Elsewhere, in Lessons in Chemistry, Captain Marvel's Brie Larson has delivered another exceptional performance. All told, it's been a great year for TV fans, and though these shows and many more, including the brilliant Daisy Jones and the Six, Yellow Jackets and Scott Pilgrim Takes Off didn't quite make the final list, they're definitely worth your time. Number 20, The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. Although this year gave us the worst season of the Walking Dead franchise to date, the nonsensical finale to Fear the Walking Dead, the apocalyptic drama also offered a refreshing instalment centered on its fan favorite Bowman, Daryl Dixon. Following the weathered survivor as he winds up in France on a mission to save a young boy, the series makes the most of its scenic set pieces and Norman Reedus gives us a commendable performance to craft one of the most cathartic and narratively daring chapters in the franchise's 13-year history. With intense action sequences and a host of compelling new characters, particularly heroic nun Isabel, Daryl Dixon is both predictable and briefly muddled in its final episode. But its new setting and Daryl's surprisingly introspective development make it a true return to form for the long-struggling franchise. Here's to hoping its second season, which will reintroduce fans to Melissa McBride's Carol, can match such a solid opening. Number 19, Star Wars Ahsoka. For the most part, the Star Wars franchise has made a very rocky relationship with TV. The latest chapter of The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and Obi-Wan Kenobi all proving to be mixed bags in the last 12 months alone. Luckily, Star Wars Ahsoka overcomes many of its predecessors' flaws, and despite a shaky start, has emerged a resounding installment for the galaxy far, far away, particularly for fans of the animated Clone Wars and Rebel series who have waited feverishly to see where the show's eponymous Jedi would end up next. Serving up some entertaining action beats and brilliant callbacks to the films and shows that have led Ahsoka to this latest journey, including a returning Hayden Christensen, Ahsoka sometimes feels a touch too burdened by its fan service, but its highs ensure it's a welcome addition to the franchise's overarching tale. Allowing its characters closure after years of heartache, Ahsoka is a hopeful journey of redemption and survival as only Star Wars could conjure. Number 18, I'm a Virgo. The latest project from prominent writer and activist Boots Riley, Isla Virgo is an absurd, heartfelt dramedy about a 13-foot teenager who's thrust into the world of political activism. Wickedly funny as it may be, I'm a Virgo sneaks up on you with its message, shifting between relatable coming-of-age comedy to confrontational, timely assessment of racism, systematic injustice, and identity in modern America without flaw. Riley aims to entertain and educate, and there's never a chance missed. Despite only being a seven-episode miniseries, with each episode barely clocking in at 30 minutes in length, I'm a Virgo balances all of its moving parts, its hilarious portrayal of teen romance, its electrifying progressivism, its lovely performances like a well-oiled machine. A touching ode to friendship and standing up for what's right, and a reminder that empathy makes the world a better place, I'm a Virgo is not one to miss. Number 17, Heartstopper. 
I R Heartstopper's debut was a welcome, hopeful addition to the LGBTQ plus canon, and its wonderful follow-up is even better, filled with sincerity, good humour, and genuinely joyful assessments of young love. Following Nick and Charlie, lovingly performed by Kit Connor and Joe Locke, as they wade into their next phase of their budding relationship, the Netflix original second season is rife with authentically written romance and characters, each of whom care deeply and face their own compelling hardships. Tender and amusing, timely and stylistically adventurous, Heartstopper's sophomore outing takes bigger risks than its opener, with more maturity and compassion guiding it forward, and the results are simply divine. It's like a hug in TV form, and at a time when hard-hitting dramas rule, its levity and hope feel vital. Number 16, Only Murders in the Building. Though not as strong as its previous two seasons, season three of Only Murders in the Building has surely cemented itself as one of the decade's most enjoyable, rewarding, and fearless TV comedies. True crime podcasters Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez find themselves at odds with each other as their latest murder case throws them headfirst into their most personal, complicated, and life-threatening race against time to date. Though the decision to have the trio separated for episodes at a time leave it lacking a mightier emotional centre, only Murder's flair for the dramatic has rarely been better than it is here, with guest stars Meryl Streep and Paul Rudd delivering the goods as flawed, egocentric actors in moral danger. Recently renewed for a fourth season, Only Murders in the Building has proven it has plenty more tricks up its sleeve and many more secrets to reveal. Number 15, The Night Agent. On paper, The Night Agent seems like it should have been released in 2005. An FBI agent faces a government conspiracy while saving a targeted victim of the officials he's attempting to bring down. In action though, The Night Agent feels decidedly modern, a throwback genre series cut from the same cloth as 24 and the short-lived alias that is every bit as fresh and twisty as its inspirationals were back in their heyday. Given a modern political edge and a star-studded cast, it makes for a fun little thriller. Brilliantly choreographed and imbued with real feeling, The Night Agent's intense mystery and high stakes carry it through its its weighty runtime with minimal strain. Number 14, Silo. Adapted from the Wall Book series by Hugh Howie, Silo doesn't feel entirely original. The world has ended and the few survivors left learn that their home is burdened by a multitude of secrets but it makes its dystopic vision wholly unique in execution. Anchored by an electrifying Rebecca Ferguson, the drama soars with its dark ruminations on human nature and survival, and finds new highs with every new set piece and stunning piece of production design that fills the screen. Simultaneously, a bracing whodunit conspiracy thriller and harrowing vision of a post-apocalyptic world that feels horribly grounded in our own world, Silo is dark and menacing, continuously shocking and bursting with possibility which is a great sign considering it's already been renewed for a second season. Apple TV has had several great shows to its name this year, but few better or more unshakable than Silo. Number 13, What We Do in the Shadows. If ever there was a worry that vampire sitcom What We Do in the Shadows would eventually run out of steam, season five has surely put them to rest with arguably its best installment yet. Taking bigger swings, the season finds naive familiar Guillermo stuck between a rock and a hard place, as he adapts to his new vampiric abilities, whilst trying to keep them hidden from his unpredictable master and unfeeling housemates, each of whom is forced to battle their own literal and figurative demons. With its cast working off each other better than ever, season five is audacious, myth-busting fun with a surprising amount of violence and frequent unexpected plot twists that never become too much for the humor to cut through. Proof that what we do in the shadows still has its fangs, its latest season proves it's a show that will never lose its touch. Number 12, Abbott Elementary. It may seem like the days of the classic studio sitcom are dead and gone, but Abbott Elementary, with its 22 episode second season, is on hand to remind audiences that the genre still has its legs. A light-footed mockumentary set in a predominantly black school in Philadelphia, Abbott Elementary's latest season continues its deep dive into America's education system with great care and effortless laughs. Its emotional center brought to life beautifully by stars Quinta Brunson, Tyler James William, and Janelle James. With more to say about the flaws of the American education system, this season makes big statements. One episode focuses on a small fire breaking out in the teacher's lounge, leaving emotional scars on those involved, but counteracts them with charming jokes and a welcome dash of romance. After the writer's strike, Abbott Elementary's upcoming third season will have a shorter run of things, but if this year is anything to go by, that won't harm it. Number 11, Poker Face. 
As a general rule, casting Natasha Lyonne in a TV show means you're onto a winner. Russian Doll, Orange is the New Black, and Poker Face finds her in her finest role to date as a casino worker with an uncanny ability to detect people's lies. From the mind of Ryan Johnson, fresh off the success of Knives Out and its sequel, Poker Face follows Leon as she travels across the states on the run from a vengeful murderer, and along the way finds herself embroiled in a variety of oddball murder mysteries. With an impossibly stacked cast of supporting players, including but not limited to Nick Nolte, Jason Gordon-Levitt, Stephanie Hsu, and Adrian Brody, the series acts as an effortlessly amusing riff on the case of the week adventure of Columbo, as well as a thrilling, unique whodunit in its own right. Clever, twisty, and hilarious, Poker Face is brilliantly staged and intensely rewatchable, and another delightful showcase for Leon and Johnson's talents. Number 10, Shrinking. One of 2023's most wonderful surprises, Bill Lawrence and Jason Siegel's comedy drama Shrinking follows a grieving therapist, a career best Siegel, who adopts a new approach to his work, telling his patients exactly what's on his mind, no filter. What follows this simple idea is a show as funny as it is thoughtful and healing. Siegel, mourning the death of his wife, is forced to confront his recent loss and the rigors of his profession whilst his patients, as well as his colleagues, which includes a light-hearted Harrison Ford, are blindsided by his honesty. Don't let this write-up fool you, though. While shrinking is not without its heartbreak and touching asides, it's never one to skimp on the laps, allowing Siegel to show audiences just how fearless a performer he can be, and finding Ford in the most relaxed role of his career. Honest and wholesome, shrinking balances its laps and drama beautifully, and is surely the best new comedy to debut this year. Number 9, Barry. We've had to say goodbye to far too many great shows this year, one of which is Bill Hader's horribly dark comedy Barry, about a hitman at odds with his career path after a job goes sideways in LA. In a season that skips through time, genre, and action sequences with startling precision, Barry ends its acclaimed run as it started, keeping audiences on their toes as the twists pile up and the death tolls rises. Barry has never felt this embattled or doomed, and the results of his downfall are both bleak and shocking. Again, this is a comedy drama that still finds plenty of time for laughs, but Barry's swan song is also its darkest chapter to date, a relentless tragedy that sends its characters into the final credits with heartbreaking, inevitable results. Stars Hader, Sarah Goldberg, Henry Winkler, and Steven Root have never been better. Surprising and stylistically daring to the very end, Barry's final season is also its strongest, and its finale signaled the end of a great TV era. Number 8, Somebody Somewhere. For the second year in a row, HBO's lovingly crafted comedy drama Somebody Somewhere is the single most underrated show on TV, ignored by every award body and wildly underseen by audiences. In its latest season, Sam continues her pursuit of happiness in the wake of her sister's untimely death, whilst her friends and family plan weddings, battle addiction, face the pitfalls of changing careers, lose touch, and find comfort in each other's company. An honest and loving ode to family in small-town America, Somebody Somewhere is naturalistic and tender, full of compelling characters who feel every bit as real as the town around them, and bursting with incredible performances, especially from Bridget Everett and Jeff Hiller. Understated and powerful, Somebody Somewhere is a show that you should not be sleeping on. Number 7, The Last of Us. The decision to adapt The Last of Us for TV was met with some uncertainty from fans of the best-selling PlayStation game, but the finished product put most worries to rest, its faithful storytelling and flawless cast bringing it all to life with resounding power. Starring Pedro Pascal as a smuggler tasked with escorting Bella Ramsey's secretive teen across a post-apocalyptic America, The Last of Us shines as a dark, action-packed adventure filled with moral quandaries, staggering set pieces, effective horror beats, and deeply felt performances. Anchored by Pascal's survivalist and Ramsey's defiant beacon of hope, the Last of Us feels both epic and intimate, its portrayal of the world's end both eerily plausible and horribly unthinkable. Much of its power comes from its cast, which also includes tragic guest spots from Melanie Linsky and Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett in the stunning third episode, Long Long Time. It may be a while before we see a second season, which is tentatively planned for a 2025 release, 
but there should be little doubt it'll be worth the wait. Number 6. The Fall of the House of Usher For his final season contracted by Netflix, horror master Mike Flanagan has followed up the likes of Midnight Mass and The Haunting of Hill House with his most gloriously twisted project to date. The Fall of the House of Usher, based on the works of Edgar Allan Poe, takes the author's stories and gives them a modern timely spin. As a powerful lad family of corrupt pharmaceutical entrepreneurs, a hunted down by a seemingly malevolent spirit intent on making them answer for their sins. With gore splattered set pieces and almost saw-like death scenes, The Fall of the House of Usher excels with its poetic literacy inspirations, but mostly with its cast, which includes a career-best Bruce Greenwood as the family's haunted patriarch, and Carla Cugino as the mysterious figure killing his children one by one. The Fall of the House of Usher brings to an end one of the finest creative partnerships of recent years. Wherever Flanagan goes next, we'll follow. Number 5. Gen V In many ways, a spin-off to Amazon's brilliant hit show The Boys felt inevitable, but could it match the original show's quality? As it turns out, yes, because Gen V is every bit as great as the series it came from, even with just one season to its name. Set concurrently with the upcoming fourth season of The Boys, Gen V follows a host of young hopefuls, as they train to land a spot on The Seven, the leading superhero team in the world but the school they're trapped in proves to be more than what meets the eye. Filled with gripping conspiracies and brilliantly widening the boys' enthralling mythology, the drama maintains a dark political edge and a gleeful disregard for audience discomfort. This one's got unsettling sex scenes, vomit, exploding heads, brainwashing, and fire, none of which overshadows the story at play. Featuring great performances and a slew of entertaining cameos, Gen V, like the show that gave it life, is proof that the superhero genre is far from finished. Number 4. Beef Beef, the best new show to debut in 2023, is a show that aims to surprise. Starting off as two embattled drivers, played by Stephen Young and Ali Wong, engage in an epic display of road rage, and quickly becoming altogether much deeper and life-affirming. Simultaneously funny and intense, Beef follows these two lost souls, each at a major crossroads in their professional and personal lives, as they come to increasingly insane blows, and soon realize there's more to their escalating feud than they were willing to accept. Angered by incredible performances from Yun and Wong, who manage to be both deeply unlikable and sympathetic, the dramedy is one of unfolding layers, each reveal in the pair's truly ridiculous melodrama more startling, honest, and healing than the last. An affecting tale as surreal and daring as it is thoughtful and heartbreaking, Beef is more than deserving of its acclaim. Number 3. Reservation Dogs one of many shows we've had to say goodbye to this year, Reservation Dogs concluded its three-season run with its strongest chapter, one which brings the Res Dogs tale to a cathartic and wonderfully ambiguous end. Unpredictable, life-affirming, and tonally challenging to the very end, Sterling Harjo and Taika Waititi's groundbreaking comedy drama ends by letting Alora, Bear, Willie Jack, Cheese, and Jackie move to the next chapter of their lives, with satisfying cathartic results, allowing them some long-awaited peace. Once again, the show embraces its inspirations, blending comedy, horror, drama, and romance into a sweet melting pot of ideas and remarkable creative leaps. And though it's in large part concerned with its character's grief and identity struggles, it's never manipulative, only emotionally true. Reservation Dogs cemented itself as one of the decade's best shows with its final season, and it's one we're sorely going to miss. Number 2. The Bear The Bear had a lot riding on its shoulders, considering the strength of its first season. But like all great shows, it proved its breakout success was not a fluke, but the start of something destined only to get better with time. In its second season, struggling chefs Kami and Sid team up to get their restaurant off the ground and bring their staff together in a series of deeply rewarding solo episodes that allow the show's many supporting players time to find themselves and heal from past wounds. The Bears' second season is an emotional roller coaster, ranging from devastating, the extended episode Fishers, which co-stars Jamie Lee Curtis and Bob Odenkirk, to peaceful, the calming episodes of Fox and Honeydew. Powerfully performed and gorgeously shot, The Bear leaves no stone unturned with its new season, and proves without a doubt it's just getting started. Number 1. Succession In the end though, there could be only one. And despite the stiff competition, the best show of the year has to be Succession, which closed its run with a final season for the ages. Following the power-hungry Roy siblings as their careers and reputations are put on the line like never before, 
Jesse Armstrong's flawless drama ends with an almost violent intensity, as Kendall, Roman, Shiv, Connor and Tom face not each other but themselves in the wake of an inevitable twist. With incredible performances from Jeremy Strong, Sarah Snook, Brian Cox, Matthew McFadden, and a show-stopping Kieran Culkin, amongst others, and a host of subversive, speechifying scripts from Armstrong, Succession ends with a bang, and an air of ambiguity too horrible to shake. For four electrifying, unpredictable seasons, Succession is one of the best shows this year, and with its one song will forever be recognised as one of the greatest ever made.